itching to get the new CSL DD Pro but not sure whether it's worth your money or not, well look no further than this particular video review. I'm Iqbal Suji and today we'll be taking a look at the CSL DD Pro. Let's check it out. Before we move on to a review of this uh, particular unit, I just want to give you an overview about a few matters on point. First of all is what's the aim of this video or this review uh, in particular and number two is I would like to justify where my position comes from so you can probably get an idea of how valid uh, my opinion is. Of course it is up to you whether it is validated or not. Number three is my gear history, what I've been to before and what I'm comparing to uh, after this. And number four is how I would like to review this unit objectively and also subjectively. And then to, to conclude it all, I'll give you my brief opinion, who should it for and is it worth your money. So first of all, what's the purpose of this review? For me, this video, this review for me, I would like to conduct it in a manner where I would like to answer two questions. Uh, first of all, who is this wheel for? And secondly is that does the CSL DD Pro makes you faster, particularly on GT Sport? So we're going to see if those two questions can be answered towards the end of the video and whether it answers your questions uh, as well. So my background of sim racing starts four years ago. I'm into my fourth year of sim racing now and the crux of my sim racing activities will be in Gran Turismo Sport. I do play a few other sims, albeit casually, uh, such as uh, Automobilista, Race Room Racing Experience, Santa Cosa con uh, and a few bits of Art Factor 2, but mainly is on Gran Turismo Sport, uh, where I conduct most of my sim racing and my competitions uh, here as well. Uh, so some of my achievements over the past four years will be as follows, if it means anything to you. Uh, I got top three in the National Toyota Velocity Esports Championship uh, and then this year in particular 2021 uh, I was able to place second uh, overall and then I was also fourth uh, in the TGR Supra GT Cup Asia 2020 and also sixth for the recently concluded TGR GT Cup Asia 2021. Uh, I also frequently placed top 50 in the Nations Cup and currently in the exhibition season as of today before the exhibition season 2 ends, I believe. Uh, right now, I'm P14 in Asia. Not too sure if it's gonna fluctuate then, then and there. But I can probably save, uh, it's probably safe to assume I'm top 20 right now. Uh, as well, oh, there's also a few more achievements in the local scene, although uh, they're not so big, such as uh, first place and second in some state uh, competitions and some other small time competitions. But here and there, I did have a few stuff uh, in between. Moving on, then we have uh, my gear history, what I've been through um, throughout my sim racing career and the equipment I've used. Uh, I started off with the uh, Logitech G29 on the Play Seat Challenge and uh, I've been on that for about one year until I decided to change due to uh, some issues on the potentiometers on the acceleration and brake pedals. Uh, towards the T300 RS GT uh, with this particular aluminum profile rig. Uh, sorry, before that, I also uh, changed the rig after the placing challenge to a race room rig, which is not bad, though it's a bit uncomfortable. And then I changed to this one, uh, this aluminum profile. And uh, before I went to the CSL DD Pro, I've been on the T300 for just under one year. And uh, now, it's a change to this bad boy. Uh, so, uh, this particular unit is, I'm just saying, is the CSL DD Pro uh, out of the box. So no additional equipment. The boost kit is not available to me, and I am I am not using the load set pedals. It's just the wheel, uh, the wheelbase, and also the two pedals that came with it. So uh, nothing else added. Although I might be doing an additional review uh, with the boost kit on. So stay tuned to that in the coming months. Uh, so. Next is, uh, I would like to talk about how I would like to review this particular unit uh, objectively 
and subjectively. So in terms of objectively, uh, I have a few combos in mind uh, which will test out various circuits and uh, car classes um, to determine whether it makes me faster or not and of course at the same time I'm going to give you an impression of how it feels. Uh, for those of you who have been uh, quite religious uh, in following the GT Sport uh, you know, combos, uh, daily races and also Nations Cup manufacturers etc etc. You might notice that these combos are quite familiar that's because all of these combos are from daily races and Nations Cup time trials. So in a sense you can go and check out over some websites such as GTS13 uh, and probably Kudos Prime uh, to see an archive of this time trial to see whether uh, my time trial is valid or not. Uh, more or less my time is somewhere within the top 20, uh, top 30 in Asia and sometimes top 10, top 20 then top 30 in the globe as well. So hopefully that's gonna give uh, some weight towards my criticism uh, of this unit. First of all, let's probably talk about the subjective feeling of using the CSL DG Pro. Uh, I've been using it for a few hours and uh, some of my settings on this wheel is I set it to automatic. So I haven't fiddled on the tweaks on the wheel yet. Uh, which uh, for those of you who have been familiar with Panatac wheels you have a lot of customi customizability on the wheel itself and uh, I haven't updated the, the software on the PC so they might have a few impacts here and there but I'm just using the automatic settings plug into the PS5 and it was all good to go so what are my impressions out of the box with this thing with, the, with those particular settings uh, for one uh, I can tell that this wheel in comparison to my previous T300 RS um, it turns more than that wheel uh, that means you can probably turn it a bit more until the understeer kicks in uh, and I was able to shave a few tents here and there uh, however uh, apart from the T300 I was also on the TLCM uh, previously so that with a load cell brake me switching to this brake I find it a bit difficult to adjust but it's not too difficult because the Fanatec brake pedals although that I can I admit it is a bit of a downgrade from a TLCM but it's not that big of a step if the TLCM is 10 in the scale then uh, the Fanatec brake pedal is somewhere between a, an 8 around that it's just that you need to get familiar with the travel uh, or well it depends on your TLCM pedal settings but for me it's just uh, trying to get used to this larger brake distance and also a feel which is less um, recoil than the TLCM so uh, apart from that in terms of pedal they're quite fine actually they're very good it's just trying to uh, get to learn the, uh, the brake modulation chill braking and such so for the feel again like I said uh, this wheel turns a bit more uh, on how uh, the track feels on the wheel. Uh, what I can say is that um, it really does depend on the game, uh, whether uh, how much feel or feedback you're getting through the wheel from, from the circuit. Uh, because it's GT Sport, uh, what you get from the T300, nothing major is going to change, right? those same hard feels it will be similar but there is there are, there are some differences with the G, uh, CSL DD Pro in comparison to its wheel uh, before I was using the T300 with uh, the the force feedback torque set at 4 and with the DD I had to set it at 7 and that's because I'm leveraging the amount of uh, power that this wheel gives from 2.1 I think it was from the from the PTNDRS towards a 5 newton meter uh, 5, 5 newton meter base uh, strength for this kit and uh, I bumped it to 7 and that's why I can start to detect a few differences here and there one is that there is a clear delineation between major feedback and also moderate feedback those that have like quick and very strong in, uh, you know, feedback can be differentiated from those that has uh, moderate feedback. For example, uh, is slight understeer uh, and oversteer. Major feedback is something, for example, uh, like the car doesn't have power steering, it really does 
uh, have a lot of weight to it uh, in comparison when you're switching towards other classes of cars that has power steering. But one gripe uh, as of now, of course probably need to fiddle with the settings a bit, I'm not too sure about that, but um, you can't really feel the curves in this game. Um, in fact, I would, uh, yeah, the curves are really difficult to feel. You, you, when you go over it, the only thing you know you're on a curb is that you know, you hear it through the audio, but you don't feel like sudden sudden shaking on the wheel. You don't feel that. Um, but uh, the response time is quite quick here. Uh, I know when I'm turning, it's going to turn at that particular moment. I know from the TG100, uh, it takes some time for me to turn. It's not that... Um, that pronounce for those who might be beginning or like uh, intermediate uh, into this kind of thing but when you're this level up it's very very small difference it can mean something when you're racing over one lap or over a long course you know the time adds up and such um but apart from that feedback has been great so far and uh, it really does deliver uh, so that's for the subjective feeling uh, for those of you who might be interested to, to think about what you might feel on the game but now let's take a look at for those who are a bit hardcore on this does the CSL DD Pro make an actual difference in lap time and speed uh, in the game so we'll see with this comparison of the time trials let's see all right first up we have the Alfa Romeo 4C uh, the group 4 category here in France has GP using the racing soft tires the orientation this combo here has been recently completed i think a few weeks ago so probably a good first uh, reference for this test so uh, the significance of this combo is that this car uh no it is for the 4c for those of you who know is notorious for being very twitchy if you don't get the feel right if you overcome it in terms of cornering then the car will slide so getting the feel of the uh, of the car and making sure you know you are under steering when you are over steering is crucial to exploit the most out of this car especially since it's kind of like a boat so uh previously here with the three turn that was able to uh get a 27 flat in the daily race but if you see on the left there i was able to put in a recent sub 27 lap time on 26 915 if i'm not mistaken if i put it on the future there but if you see on the right the DD Pro uh, doesn't seem to lag far behind. In fact, they are neck and neck. Uh, so we'll see what are the times when cars in the line. But uh, Group 4 is actually a good category to test because they might look slow, but the smallest of inputs can mean a whole lot of difference in terms of lap time. So coming across the final turn here, let's see what are the times. You see they are quite close here. And we see that the CSR DD puts in a 26. 908 so beating very just so it doesn't mean that have a significant difference in terms of performance all right next up here we have the harakan group 3 over in spa front or strong quite a popular combo right here using the racing medium tires so here uh, there's a few number of cars you can use to get fast uh, the popular option is the gr supra but i would like to use the harakan because uh, you know, I had difficulties putting a decent lap time with the Harakan even though people do put in the fast slams around here with this car. So hopefully I was going to see if this particular car, uh, sorry, the ZD Pro can improve the lap time around here or not. So the nature of the Harakan around here it is that it's quite similar to the 4C, uh, but this car it tends to uh, it tends to oversteer quite suddenly. So you really need to pick up on the oversteer quite early on. But one major difference I noticed, I think I mentioned before, over the DD Pro uh, around here compared to the 300 is that you can turn in a whole lot more on the steering in comparison to the 300. Uh, in the 300, if I hit the moment the, where I feel the understeer, that's it. But in the CSL DD Pro, you feel the understeer. But if you turn in more, you can actually turn in quite more and allow the car to go around the corner faster so that's the major difference I've noticed uh, with the Harakan around here so the sector 1 shows slight improvement but coming into the end of sector 2 this is where we see all uh, that major uh, all the benefits 
uh, or the DD Pro comes in handy. So coming across the end of sector 2, we put it a very, very beautiful uh, sub 101 in sector 2. I don't get sub 101 very often or even if I did, it's probably in a different car. I believe it was the NSX where it's much more superior in the corners than the Harakan. But for the Harakan to put in a very 108 uh, around sector 2, that means something. So uh, with the Harakan before, I was only able to put a 15.9, so only just into the 15, which is quite far over the place from the others. But with the DD Pro, let's see what is the time coming across the line. That is a 15.5, so a whole lot different, close to 0 0.3, 0 0.4 uh, in terms of performance there from the CSL DD Pro. Next up, we have the Raybrick NSS Group 2. Again, back in Brands Hatch GP. So a few times come up, this time we are using the racing mediums. It was a daily race combo and uh, I put in quite an okay time around here. Uh, I did a 114.194. So uh, missing out into the 13s, but uh, it's quite decent. It is somewhere up there, but not too, but then quite far from the top 10. So the NSX, because it is a high downforce car and goes around very quickly, uh, if you already have the basics done uh, and you know how to control the car generally around the circuit, then uh, in my opinion, it doesn't really uh, you know, accumulate a whole lot of lap time uh, cuts uh, per se. So uh, you see on the screen that, again, it's not much difference. If you could see from the Hurricane, there's a significant difference in terms of pace, especially coming out of sector 2. But right over here, they see they are still neck and neck. So uh, the group two cars uh, in this car orientation doesn't have much difference. Uh, you see that even on the CSLDE uh, lap time, I put in some li uh, liberties trying to go a bit wide to get carry more speed. But uh, coming across the line, the DD Pro will only put in a 14.049. So not much difference, just a 150th difference there between the T300. All right, next up, we have the 919 Hybrid over at Suzuka GP. So there's quite a few cars to be chosen for this combo it was in the daily race. The fastest car is the R18, but uh, I don't really want to spend too much time getting into every, uh, you know, restarting every lap just because the battery ran out. So I chose the Porsche around here. So I put quite an okay time around here with the R18. So uh, with the Porsche, I am quite comfortable. And in fact, this was the car choice I used uh, during the daily race, during the race itself. Uh, because you know the battery is always there and the tire was not too bad it's manageable so over here uh, again like I mentioned before with the rate break uh, if you already get the basic the line down the acceleration blah 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 uh, there's not much to be gained actually around here uh, the only few categories I can say that can benefit a whole lot with this change of wheel peripheral will be slower cars and also well, not really slower cost, but more of the middle category. Not too fast, but not too slow, especially in group, uh, group 3. So, uh, probably it's maybe, uh, but then I'm not too sure, maybe if others could chip in on uh, that uh, opinion uh, to justify a little bit whether that might be a significant difference or not. But maybe, you know, probably it's due to lack of experience with this new wheel. But uh, yeah, it's not much difference. Uh, if we're gonna go across the line in a few bit. Uh, again, I mentioned I put in in 39.6 with the T300, uh, but now coming across the line, taking quite nicely. A bit of a oversteer uh, for the CSL DD, but we're gonna go across the line with a 39.47. So, again, not too much, just 0.13 of a difference. Next up. We have the Super Formula 2019 over a Red Bull GP. So it is quite a difficult combo, this one, with the racing medium tires. Uh, whereas you want to exploit as much of the track as possible, but again, the dawn of penalties uh, is always looming above you. So Red Bull Ring is not much of a cornering circle, where, but then you can, you can call it in a sense, especially sector 2 onwards. Uh, but uh, it is dominated by a lot of slow corners. So uh, with that in mind, uh, if you could turn in a bit quicker through the slow corner, then maybe you can get an advantage. 
at around here with the DD Pro or so they may say. So this combo we put in a 13.132 with the T300 and you can see that the CSR DD starts to edge out by just a bit coming into the infield of Red Bull Ring. As you can see it goes into this left hander a bit quicker than the T300 and seems to be gaining an edge. So uh, yeah, I reiterate this time and time again, the advantage of the DD Pro is that you, can, you are able to turn in more than your other wheel, in this case the T300. So if we could see, coming across the line, the DD Pro is able to put a sub 13 minute lap time, so very quick and about close to 2 tenths of a difference for the SM19. Next up, we have a very very old combo, I think it was from 2 years ago. And this will be the Zonda R over at the Nürburgring GP. This combo was present in the Nations Cup race and for some reason this combo back then for me I feel really nice to drive in. So we are using the racing soft tires. In the race it was using the racing soft and the racing mediums. Um, uh, and if I'm second there was a top 16 round around here so if you want to check it out over in that race to see how the others perform then please go ahead it's available on the GT, uh, GT, uh, sorry, GT uh, channel there you go so now uh, coming in towards uh, these uh, classes of car that's where I start to notice the line is being blurred between the T300 and the CSL DD Pro uh, to make it short uh, the benefit of the wheel uh, only becomes more evident when there is more down points involved uh, but not too much. So basically there is a plateau at which if the downforce of the car, let's say I believe the plateau, start, the plateau starts around I don't know maybe group 3 uh, that's where the difference in lap time becomes uh, smaller and smaller but from slower cars uh, onwards the difference might be a bit bigger but then uh, yeah, uh, again, it's up to the drivers. So, coming into us, this last chicane here, you can see both of them are still side by side, so not much difference. Uh, uh, with the T300 RS, uh, I was able to put in a 48.863, so quite okay. But with DD Pro, I was able to put in a 48.785, so not much, just under one tenth of a difference in lap time. Alright, now we'll be moving towards the final combo for this comparison which will be using the F1500 TA over at Interlagos uh, which was uh, previously done on a few weeks ago on the daily race. Uh, luckily for me, this was a combo that I kind of like even though it's very challenging but for some reason I was able to groove with this combo quite well. Now, this is where things become very much blurred because uh, I guess I can spoil it now is that I can say is that uh, I wasn't able to replicate or beat my previous time so over on the left uh, which is of course the T300 I was able to put in a 17.18 whilst on the right the DD Pro uh, is about 2 to 3 tenths slower so what does this mean? it means that for this game in particular uh, difficult cars such as the F1500 TA and maybe to an extent Zonda R or even other classic cars which uh, you know have very difficult handling and also acceleration uh, you know uh, yeah, acceleration uh, methods uh, apply it is the line becomes very blurred uh, where the hardware difference doesn't really uh, exist so it's more of a skill level uh, for these kind of different car cars but otherwise for the rest of the field there is some difference so over the line we have the faster lap time going to the T300 RS alright so this is the list of the times comparing between the T300 and the CSL DD Pro so if you can go through all that and this is a summary of all of it so you can see there's differences here and there but only subtle not too much of a gain like one second or two just about at the maximum 0.4 seconds and we even dropped a bit with the F1500 TA but otherwise overall there is slight improvement from this so now we come towards the end of this video review the conclusion 
and uh, how do we conclude is by answering the first two questions I put out earlier in this video. Question one, uh, does it make you faster? I would say 100% yes. Uh, for me, uh, with my experience with this wheel, the improvement varies between 0.1 until 0.5 seconds depending on the car. Uh, however, it doesn't make you faster every time. What I notice is that for cars that require uh, more, uh, more refined inputs, uh, those small inputs, uh, for example, with the Zonda R and of course the F1500 TA, which is very, very difficult to drive, uh, I would say that's 90% skill and 10% hardware. So on that line, uh, sorry, on that front, the line is being blurred between these two devices. But overall, uh, as you can see, evidently by the times, there is an improvement and I would say I am faster this wheel. However, question number two, who is this wheel for now? For me personally, I will recommend it to two types of people. One is for people like myself who definitely want to be uh, not just faster, but the fastest out of all drivers out there. Um, preferably um, national level, uh, regional level, or even the world level. This is probably the wheel that you want to get because, well, if you're on Grand Turismo Sport, this is the wheel that will be supported later in Grand Turismo 7, and of course, it's direct drive. But if you were to compare it with TGT, I would see in terms of Grand Turismo Sport, both perform at approximately the same level. So you couldn't go wrong about not getting this and sticking towards the TGT. But still, I'm not too sure what's going to happen in GT7. That's probably uh, a separate video if possible. But then again, I need to get a unit to compare it to. So we'll see how it goes. So uh, of course, one more is for those who wishes to get a bit more um, experience uh, driving in the same or in Gran Turismo Sport. Granted, I would say that uh, the difference in terms of driving feeling is not night and day. If anything, it's very similar. It's just that with this wheel, you can have variable, um, how do you call it, variable uh, inputs uh, coming through the wheel. Uh, for example, you cannot appreciate understeer as a separate type of feel in comparison to which just a rumble on the track. Whereas before, on my T300, both of them have kind of like similar, similar magnitude of feedback. So there's not much differentiating between the two. So overall, that's the experience we're getting out of the game, but it's not going to be night and day. Uh, of course, this is with the normal power unit. Uh, so I'm not too sure if the booster kit will give it any much more difference. We'll see that in uh, probably the next time. So uh, uh, on towards the point of, you know, uh, the line being blurred, uh, especially with more difficult cars. Uh, if I were to shout out someone, is someone from uh, a, a Japanese driver that I know. Uh, his ID is TX3 Tenagazuru, so a small shout out to him. Uh, last time round over in the Nations Cup, uh, what do you call it? Um, the recently concluded, um, what was it? Yeah, exhibition season. He was, I think he was the fastest uh, person on time trial over in the Nations Cup, uh, you know, combo at that time. And he is still using a T300. So on that aspect, there is definite proof that sometimes you don't need to have the best hardware to be the fastest. Sometimes you just need at least a decent one to be the best. In this case, him is a good example. Final notes before we conclude this video, all of the settings on this wheel is set to automatic. Um, so I haven't fiddled around with the wheel. Uh, it's all set on automatic, uh, no changes what, done whatsoever. Uh, but after compiling the time trials, I even tried playing around with the settings a bit. And from what I can tell, it will not make you any more faster uh, than to AVR. It's all a matter of personal preference. Uh, but it won't drastically, for example, improve by half a second or not. It's just the wheel settings are there just to suit what you want from the game, but it doesn't necessarily make you faster. Well, it could if you were struggling, for example, to you know counter uh, the steering wheel or maybe trying to control the wheel when it starts to center itself on that aspect alone. But in terms of going faster, it, it probably wouldn't make much of a difference. So uh, yeah. Even for myself, I prefer the automatic settings in comparison towards fine-tuning because I feel that the automatic settings are pretty good 
terms of feedback and how I would like to control uh, on the wheel. So yeah, those are the settings I use on the wheel itself. With that, thank you for watching this review on the CSL DT Pro. It's been a pleasure for me to have this unit and hopefully this will be sustained and good for the long term in particular, which is what I intend to do so. Uh, huge thanks towards my fellow friend Mind of K for editing and compiling this video together. He's an awesome guy, very stellar work. He's also a streamer as well. Check out his channel over on Facebook with the name. Uh, the link is in the description. And also, thank you for watching this video. If you want to support this channel or this page, do click in the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully, with your support, I can make more content like this. Not just maybe reviews, but also maybe other sim racing contents if you're interested. Uh, final note is to watch out for another review and that will be this particular unit, the DD Pro together with the Boost Kit coming up uh, quite soon. So if you want to, uh, if you don't want to, if you want to get notified on that, do follow this page or this channel and get notified when the video comes out. Till then, thank you for watching this video. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's me, Iqbal Suji and see you guys next time.